Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Winnie Palomino, and this is my review of The Stool Pigeon. One thing I love about having friends in Hong Kong, and I actually do, is that sometimes I get to see them in movies. Gloriana Wong is pretty enough in person, but when she's projected 20 feet high on a screen, doing things that make Nick Chung appreciate acting as a career choice, it's attention getting. I just felt bad that she had a very small role. I mean, I felt good that she had a very small dress, but that's not really my point. I also felt bad that her role was of a home wrecker with a contributing medical condition. Having played that role in real life, I felt that I could empathize, but never mind that. I can also tell you that my friend Jane Wong makes an appearance in this film too, although she's wearing a lot more clothing. And I'm not going to tell you where, because that's not how Where Is Jane Wong played. I will give you a clue. Ho, ho, ho. And that is not the name of the latest manufactured Cantopop trio, although it could be. Director Dante Lam once again pairs up Nick Tse and Nick Chung, just like he did in Beast Stalker. But unlike that film, Nick Chung now plays the cop and Nick Tse plays the crook. Nicholas Tse plays Ghost Jr., a young man just paroled from prison who becomes an informer to help clear his family's debt and to get his sister out of a brothel. Nick Chung plays the cop who runs Ghost Jr., an officer whose career has taken over his life and nearly destroyed everything else in it, including him. Now, let's be honest. I don't go to the movies to be edified or educated. I go to be entertained. And for me, if a film entertains me, it's a good film. Stool Pigeon entertained me, and so for that, I am grateful. But I think it's also a very good film on its own merits. Dante Lamb creates what was, for me, a very gritty and engaging story that I enjoyed watching as well as looking at. I really liked the way the film looked. The details are notable, and they're obviously kind of considered. You can tell they put a lot of work into the scenery. And to me, it made a big difference. The action scenes are well staged and, more importantly for me, believable. The fight scenes, of which there are a few, are actually quite disturbing in their visual impact. I have a feeling that the NG reel would show us quite a few nasty, painful mishaps. The acting in the film is another plus, with both of the lead actors turning in very commendable performances. It's rare to see a Hong Kong actor cry in a movie and feel like it's genuine. I'm glad that the stool pigeon succeeded on that point because it made a big difference for me. Included in this is the capacity to be so realistic that it makes them unattractive, both aesthetically and behaviorally. The Stool Pigeon thoroughly entertained me. I was so involved with the story and the way it was being shown to me and acted out that I didn't notice that all the story's moral and legal loose ends got tied up in a nice, pretty red bow. Sure, it can be shown in China, but it all makes sense in the story and there was no obtrusive, haha, I am actually a police officer kind of thing. In fact, the film's ending was something that I particularly liked. Not just for the content, but for the way it was done. To me, it was very evocative of, or even making an homage, to the Hong Kong movies of the 1980s, when Chow Yun-Fat and Danny Lee made Reservoir Dogs the first time, but called it City on Fire. Now, I do want you to watch The Stool Pigeon, but don't download it, because downloading sucks balls. Buy a copy of it. In the description, there's a link where you can do that. You can buy this movie. If you enjoyed this review, please leave me a comment. If you didn't enjoy the review, leave me a comment anyway. If you enjoy these reviews in general, please think about subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.